Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit, as we go into your word, the Holy Bible, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. We're going to continue our study of the great book of John with the 20th chapter in the very first verse. John chapter 20, verse 1 reads, The first day of the week, which is Sunday, comes Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark to the sepulchre, which is where Jesus' body was buried in that tomb, and sees the stone taken away from the sepulchre. So she came to put these spices and things on the body to keep, you know, keep the smell down, and she saw that the tomb was opened, that the door, that large stone, was rolled away. Verse 2 says, then she runs and comes to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, which is John, and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. So Mary went running immediately and informed Simon, Peter, and John that the tomb was open and the Lord's body wasn't there. Verse 3, Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulchre. So they got up and went immediately to see whether or not what she told him was true. Verse 4, so they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter. Peter was an older man, and John was the younger between the two. So John got there first, and came first to the sepulchre. So he got there first. Oh, Peter was doing the best he could. Verse 5, and he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying. Yet went he not in. He looked, he saw the linen clothes that were wrapped around Christ's body lying on the floor. And he was just sitting there with his mouth hanging open and like, wow, what is going on? But he did not go into that tomb. Verse 6 says, then came Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre and sees the linen clothes lie. So Peter was always that one that would go a little further. And I believe that's one of the reasons the Father chose him. So he went inside and saw it up close. Verse 7 says, And the napkin that was about his head, the napkin that was wrapped around his head, was lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Now, during the culture of the ancient Jews, and they probably still practice it today, when they would have a meal, they would take the napkin and if they had to go out to the bathroom or something or they're just going to take a break they didn't want to eat no more but they weren't finished eating they would put it a certain way so the people would know not to bother anything it says to the people that I'm not done eating yet so don't come over here cleaning up and moving stuff so when he saw that napkin sitting over there away from the linen clothes it was Jesus letting them know I'm not done yet <laughs> so that's why the Bible makes sure it points that out. It says, verse 8, Then went in also 
the other disciple which came first to the sepulchre and he saw and believed. So John came in after Peter came in and he saw the same thing. He saw the linen clothes and he saw the napkin sitting over there by itself. Verse 9 says, For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. So it hadn't been fully revealed to them that Christ was going to come back from the dead, even though he told them several times. But they did understand when they saw that napkin over there what that meant in Jewish culture. Verse 10, then the disciples went away again to their own home. So they just got up and left. 11, but Mary stood outside at the sepulchre weeping. Mary was out there crying her eyes out. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. So she cried and she looked in there again. 12, and she sees two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus was laid. So she looked in, this time she saw two angels in white sitting on both sides where Jesus' body had been laid. 13, and they say to her, woman, why are you crying? Why weepest thou? What are you crying about? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. Verse 14, and when she had in this way said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not it was Jesus. So she saw these two angels dressed in white, and she turned around after she had spoken with them, and she saw Jesus, but Jesus made it where she couldn't understand it was him, because he's almighty God, he could do anything. 15. Jesus said to her, Woman, why weepest thou? Or woman, why are you crying? Whom seekest thou? Who are you looking for? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have borne him, hence if you carried him away from here, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. So she didn't know that this was Jesus standing in front of her because he didn't allow her to know that. Verse 16, Jesus said to her, Mary. In Hebrew, he said, Miriam. She turned herself and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say master, master. So he opened it up where she could understand that this was him. He said to her, Mary. And he said it in a way that she could understand that this was him talking to her. And it's no doubt that he also, through the Spirit, allowed her to see who he really was at that moment. And she said, Master! <laughs> she was happy. Verse 17, Jesus said to her, Touch me not, don't touch me. For I am not yet ascended to my Father. Now this is important. Because Christ came to fulfill a lot of the prophecies in the Old Testament. And a lot of the feast days and other things were all fingers pointing to the Messiah and the work that he would accomplish on behalf of God for us at the cross. So you have all these feasts and they all have spiritual significance. I have a Bible study on that particular subject and I encourage you to study with me and I explain in that video the significance of them and whether or not we're still supposed to be practicing those days. So anyway, one of the things that happened during one of those feasts was a wave offering. So when God had blessed Israel with the first fruits of the harvest, which was pointing to Christ, how he would be the firstborn or to return from the world of the dead, they would get a portion of them and wrap them up and they would wave it before God as a wave offering. So this is why Christ said, don't touch me. Don't touch me yet, because I have not ascended to my Father. He had to go and appear in the presence of God in heaven as a wave offering for sin before he came back and gave some final instructions and encouragement to his followers. So that's why he told her, touch me not, or don't hold me up. That's the same thing. 
for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren, brothers and sisters in Christ who follow me, and say to them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. 18. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. So she went and told him exactly what Jesus told her to tell him. Now, don't miss the significance that Christ appeared to woman first. Because there's a lot of false teachers who teach that Jesus don't use women and all this nonsense. That's not true. He does use women. He just does not use them as a pastor in a church where there's men. But he uses women in just about every other way. They just cannot be a pastor of a church having men under their authority. So he sent her to tell them. Verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, still that same Sunday, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be to you. So he appeared to them that same day at evening. He said, peace be unto you. The reason why he said that is because they were hiding like a bunch of cowards. they like, now they killed our Lord Jesus. They know we were with him, so they're probably going to kill us too. So let's get off the street. <laughs> he came, uh-uh. You don't have to worry about that because nothing's going to happen to you unless I allow it to. Anyway, verse 20, and when he had so said, he showed to them his hands and his side. He said, yeah, look. You see the moles? This is me. Because some still weren't believing. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. So they faith was built up right then and there. They were strengthened and they rejoiced. 21. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be to you. As my Father has sent me, even so I send you. He said, I want you to understand, just like God sent me into the world, to preach the gospel, I'm about to send you out to preach the gospel. 22, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Ghost. Now I want you to get this. He breathed the Holy Spirit on them and told them to receive it. He said in 23, whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted to you. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. So he said, whoever sins you forgive, they will be forgiven. And whoever sins you don't forgive, they won't be forgiven. He's given them that authority to continue the work of building for his kingdom. But notice he breathes the Holy Spirit on them. He gave them a little bit of the Spirit at that time. Because when he ascended back up to heaven for good, he poured out the Holy Spirit in a major way. And we read about that in the second chapter of the book of Acts. So he gave him a little of the Spirit right then. It's important because without the Holy Ghost, you and I can't do anything for the Lord. We can't even know the Lord. So that's why he breathed the Spirit on them and gave them that authority. Verse 24. It says, but Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, that's his nickname that Christ gave him, was not with them when Jesus came. It meant doubtful. They called him Doubting Tom. So he's always doubting. He had to see proof. He wasn't there when Christ came the first time to the dis disciples. 25. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Except I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. He says, and I hear what you're saying, but if I don't see the proof, I don't believe nothing. Verse 26. And after eight days again, his disciples were within. They were in that same room hiding. <laughs> they probably were hiding, but they were in there. And Thomas with him. Thomas was there this time. 
Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be to you. So he just appeared right in the middle of them. I, I would love to have seen that, even though it would be scary. But the Lord just materializes out of thin air. Just, just poof, There he is right there. Didn't walk in the door or nothing. So he appears right in the midst of them. 27. Then he said to Thomas, <laughs> Reach here your finger and behold my hands, and reach here your hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless but believing. He said, I heard you, what you said the last time when I came and appeared to them because Christ knows all things. He's God Almighty just like the Father in heaven and the Holy Spirit. So even though I was... After I left and they told you they saw me, I heard what you said. So as soon as he appeared, he said, come here, Doubting Tom. Look, look at the holes. Look at the, the big scar on my side where they stuck the spear. He said, stop being faithless and believe. 28. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord, my God. Once he sees the proof. 29. Jesus said to, to him. Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. It is of the utmost importance, brothers and sisters, that we have faith in Jesus. Because without faith, we cannot be saved. If we don't believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, we cannot be saved. So that's why he said what he said. You've seen me, Tom. But blessed are those who've never seen me and yet believe. So belief is of the utmost importance. And that's what we're operating in for the most part right now. You have people claim they've seen Jesus in our time. And I would not debate that with him. Because I don't know if he, if he appeared to them or not. But according to scripture... I don't think he would, but whatever. We're operating in faith. We're going strictly by what the Holy Spirit has revealed. We have not seen Jesus, but yet through the Spirit we know he is real. And so we walk by faith, not by sight. And that is the quintessential thing when it comes to salvation. Belief. Believing that God is. Okay, that he exists. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. We're going to be saved through, through grace by faith. Faith is our belief that Jesus Christ died for our sins at Capri. That his precious blood cleanses us of sin when we repent and receive him as our Lord. And that that blood will never lose his power. Now, once you understand these things through God's spirit, you can walk with your head held up high, knowing that you have eternal salvation, not because of anything you've done, you've done, but because of what Jesus did. You have eternal salvation, and no one can change that except you by not believing. Okay? Very important. That's why he told Thomas this, and it was written for our learning. Verse 30 says, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. 31. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. So God had exactly what he wanted written, written. He did not have everything recorded. So that's why when people start asking you stuff that God didn't talk about in the Bible, it obviously wasn't something important. God gave us exactly what we need in his word from Genesis to Revelation to help strengthen our faith. So brothers and sisters, I encourage you not to miss the next Bible study when we go into the final chapter of this great book of John. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, 
This is how you can do that. Go to paypal.com, download the PayPal app. It's free. Then you would use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. My code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441-4563. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly and this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. And if you don't have a phone, you can email me, BartonAaronPorter at gmail.com. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. And please take the time to put something in the comment section. Now, these shirts that you see me wear all the time are my own designs. I have an online t-shirt store. It's godwear.store. So please check out the t-shirts, the hoodies, the women tees, the cups. If you see something you like, buy it because you're getting something that you can use to share the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere you go. And you're also blessing this ministry as well. So until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye.